mountain you won't climb and I'm coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. Hey, good morning, everybody. Finally back in person worshiping God. Awesome. Shall we all stand as we worship God this morning?
praise let our praise be your welcome let our songs be a sign we are here for you we are here for you let your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your light we are here for you we are here for you to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you are our one design you alone are holy only you are worthy god let your fire fall down let us shout be your anthem your renown fills the skies we are here for you We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. We are here for you. you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you are our one design you alone are holy only you are worthy god let your fire fall down to you our hearts to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you are of one design to you alone are holy only you are worthy god let your fire fall down oh we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love we welcome in this place we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love we welcome in this place let every heart adore let every soul awake almighty god of love we welcome in this place we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love we welcome in this place shall we all sing it together we welcome you we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love we welcome in this place we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love be welcome in this place let every heart adore let every soul awake almighty god of love be welcome in this place we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love be welcomed in this place we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love be welcomed in this place 
we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love be welcomed in this place yes, lord thank you for this wonderful opportunity you've given us to come back to fellowshipping with our brothers and sisters in person Lord as we hear this morning we want to welcome you into our midst take your rightful place and be with us this morning as we spend time in your presence Lord Well thank you for keeping us all this while and we pray that you would continue to keep us and be with us Thank you Jesus Praises rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you Cause when we see you We find strength to face the day And in your presence All our fears are washed away So washed away Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, he the sound of Returning to you, return to you in your kingdom. Broken lives are made new, you make us new. Cause when we see you, cause when we see you To face the day And in your presence, and in your presence All our fears are washed away so Washed away Hosanna Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Yes, Lord. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, 
All our fears are washed away. Sing, washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. Greater is the one who's in us. Greater is the one who calls our name. He will never fail. Stronger is the one within us. Stronger is the one. Who's fight for us? He will never fail. You will never fail. For your love endures forever. For your love endures forever. Open up our eyes. Surround us with your light, your love endures forever. Open up our eyes. Surround us with your light, your love endures forever. Yeah. Come on, let us sing, Mighty is the One. Mighty is the One who's for us. Mighty is the One who's strong to save. He will make a way. You will make a way for your love and earth. Forever, for your love endures forever. Open up our eyes, surround us with your light. Your love endures forever. Open up our eyes, surround us with your light. Your love endures forever yeah. our God is fighting for us always our God is fighting for us oh our God is fighting for us always we are not alone we are not alone our God is fighting for us always our God is fighting for us all yeah our God is fighting for us always we are not alone we are not alone we are not alone we are not alone for your love endures forever. For your love 
endures forever. Open up our eyes, surround us with your light, your love endures forever. Open up our eyes, surround us with your light, your love endures forever. Yeah. Our God is fighting for us always. Our God is fighting for us oh. Our God is fighting for us always. We are not alone. We are not alone. Our God is fighting for us always our god is fighting for us all our god is fighting for us always we are not alone we are not alone we are not alone we are not alone For your love endures forever. For your love endures forever. Open up our eyes, surround us with your light. Your love endures forever. Open up our eyes. Surround us with your light, your love endures forever. Amen. Be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning to all the people here in person, also all the people watching online as we're streaming it live. Good morning to you as well. Uh, I'm just overjoyed to have other people here. It's been basically myself and, and Richard and Dave here, and, and certainly we're, we're uh, certainly more than willing to be able to, to do this and, and run the services online for everybody watching uh, online. But we are just thrilled to have more people here this morning to, to gather as God's people uh, just to, to fellowship with one another, what a, what a gift that is, what a joy that is, but even more importantly, as we gather we gather as God's people to lift up collectively as his people to lift up our voices in praise and worship. And so I'm just sort of thrilled to be here in person with my brothers, my sisters in the Lord, and, and just to worship. We're thrilled to have you guys here online with us as well streaming. Uh, we do have some announcements, so I do want to uh, call attention to those. Certainly we've started back up with our regular gatherings for Sunday worship. We're still offering the services online. They're still streamed there. So if you're still uh, just a little bit about, you know, coming here in person, uh, that's fine. You can still watch online. Uh, but if you are eager just to be with your brothers and sisters in the Lord and, and come here into God's house and just uh, with one another, God's people, just to worship and praise Him, uh, then feel free. You can certainly come. We're going to be gathering every Sunday as we usually do, uh, as we did before the pandemic. So we're excited about that. Um, uh, other announcements. Our adult Sunday morning small group is also meeting church, uh, and they are doing so down below in the fellowship hall. They'll be doing that each Sunday at 9.30 a.m., uh, so if you're interested in that, then come here, be a part of that. Uh, also, just to avoid any uh, extra contact, we're not going to be doing the offering in sort of the usual way of passing the plate around and whatnot. Uh, it's at the back table of the sanctuary. You can see the offering plate there, so on your way out after the service, uh, you can just drop in your offering if you have it. Uh, with you. For those online watching, you can just mail it in if you'd like. That would certainly be a blessing to us if you could do that. Uh, other announcements. Uh, after the service, we're not going to have the usual fellowship hour where we go down into the fellowship hall and just sort of hang out. We're not going to be doing that, uh, but we will still have the Zoom virtual fellowship time after the service. Uh, so for those online, right after the service, you can just click the link there, head there and fellowship. For those of us here, uh, we can head home, and, and when we get home, we can click that link and, and join up. And I know that that goes on for quite some time, so don't feel like if you're here in person, oh, you're just, you know, by the time you get home, you're going to miss it all. Uh, no, there'll still be plenty of time, so when you get home, you can join up with that. 
Uh, also, uh, other announcements. Uh, we could certainly still use uh, more media team volunteers just to help Dave out with all of the, the tech stuff, running the sound, and especially now as we're streaming services. Uh, there's just more to manage with that, and so it's uh, really ideal if we have two people on a Sunday running that. That would be a big help, and we certainly have plans to sort of upgrade how we're going to be doing the live streaming and have a better camera and all that and really do that uh, long term, even after the pandemic and everything goes back to normal. Uh, so we want to have more people helping with that team. So if you're interested in that, then you can talk to Dave, uh, and that would be a great help. Uh, also, our Friday night small group that meets at uh, 7.30 every Friday, they're going to continue meeting on Zoom, so they're not going to meet in person uh, here at the church. They'll just keep with their weekly Zoom meetings. So uh, if that interests you, you can join up for that. And I know the email goes out with the link there, the weekly newsletter, so you can click that uh, on Friday, 7.30, and join up for that small group. And then lastly, we have our visitor card. Not sure that we have any visitors, but if somehow I'm missing you, uh, this is for you at the bottom of the bulletin. You can fill that out, uh, name, just a little information so we can be in touch. Uh, fill that out. You can tear it off of the bulletin. And then after the service, uh, as you head on out, you can drop it in the offering plate, and we would be thrilled to have that info. Uh, and that is all for our announcements. So we want to take some time just to, to quiet our hearts, come before the Lord in prayer. So pray with me. Lord God, what a joy it is to be here and be together as your people. Gathering in person, certainly we're grateful for technology and over the past couple months to be able to still have our services online and, and live streamed. What a blessing that's been, but it's also just a, a great joy now to finally be able to uh, just gather together in person and, and have that fellowship with one another and and collectively as your people just to worship you and praise you, Lord. What a joy it is, what nourishment to our souls. And, and it's a blessing from you to be able to do that, and we're grateful for it. We just want to celebrate that and thank you for that blessing, Lord. Oh, we thank you for, for this church, for everyone who's a member of it, Lord. Uh, we are truly blessed to have such wonderful brothers and sisters in you, Lord Jesus. And we pray just for your blessing upon all of us, Lord, that you would just be at work in our hearts this morning, bringing transformation as we open up your word, the scriptures, Lord, just be at work in our lives day in and day out, growing us, maturing us in the faith, and using us, Lord, day after day in service to you and your kingdom for your glory, Lord. And it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Shall we come before God, friends, as we prepare our hearts? Shall we stand as we sing? Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace Amen 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 shine upon you be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace Amen Amen Amen
May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may His presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 yeah amen 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 May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children. May His presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you, He is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is there for you he is 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 for you yeah I upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 one who's the same yesterday, today and forever you are the same God who heals us, who protects us who goes before us 
Lord, thank you for being such a faithful God in our lives. Thank you for you being a blessing in our lives. We can't imagine our lives without you. We thank you, Father, for this time. And we believe that you're going to make this time count in our lives. Renew us, transform us, and help us to leave this place with a challenge in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. So for the sermon today, for the message, we, we've started this series where uh, really I'm preaching on topics that I really feel the Holy Spirit has just laid on my heart to, to really communicate to the church, to, to focus on and preach on. Uh, so we're just focusing really on that, what the Holy Spirit wants us to hear and, and be challenged by, be confronted with. And, and sort of as I was thinking about this week, even initially I had already had something else planned, but then finding out, hey, we're opening back up, we're having services here. I know there's still some watching online, but to, to have people gather here uh, as God's people to worship the Lord, um, I, I really wanted to focus on that and recognize that, that to be able as God's people, just to gather. I mean, to gather to fellowship with one another, even if we're not going to have our fellowship hour after the service, still even as we come and we get to sort of connect a little bit, those of us who've been apart for for two months now doing services online. And again, that's a a great blessing to have the technology to be able to do that in the midst of of this season, this pandemic. But it's not quite the same as being together with our brothers and sisters in the Lord and and to, to fellowship with one another, but also even more significantly, as God's people, just to collectively together just worship the Lord, just to praise Him, just lift up our voices, sing His praises, worship Him, honor Him, give Him thanks. And certainly I don't want to make worship and gathering here on Sundays all about ourselves, right? It's fundamentally about the Lord and we're here to worship Him. But this has made us for worship and has made us to experience joy and delight in it. Uh, That's just the way we're wired. That's the way God made us all the way from the beginning. We were made to be in relationship with God, to be his, his, and just to pour praise and to delight in it and rejoice in it, right? For there to be great satisfaction for in it, for it just to nourish our souls. And we were also created as communal creatures. We're, We're not creatures who are meant to sort of be on an island all by ourselves, right? Certainly we can worship the Lord on our own as we're at home, as we're in our cars. However, you know, at any time we can just worship the Lord. But at the same time, we have been made as as creatures who are to be in community and and especially to be in community, certainly with the Lord first and foremost, but also with our family of faith, our, our brothers, our sisters in the Lord. And so he has made us to be in relationship in that way, made us to be in community and also to worship as a community. Yes, we worship as individuals, and we should be doing that all day, every day, just taking time just to be praising the Lord, right, whether we're at work, whether at, we're at home, and just be worshiping in, in our heart of hearts. But there's still something special about God's people coming together in His house, and as we gather just collectively, just to worship, just to praise Him. There's just something wondrous and special about that, and it's just a great delight it's satisfying and nourishing to the soul. It just brings great joy. It is truly a blessing from the Lord. And I think it's a blessing that we can all too easily sort of take for granted, right? You can just sort of go through your years as a follower of the Lord and you just sort of take it for granted. You know, Sunday comes and what am I going to do? Well, I'll go to church and be with my brothers and sisters in the Lord and praise Him and worship Him. And certainly, yeah, we know that's wonderful and it's a blessing, but I think oftentimes when suddenly that blessing, this can be true for any blessing, something that we have that's a blessing and it's, it's sort of taken from us for a season. And so for the last two months, right, we've had to, and again, in a sense, it's a blessing that we have technology, but we've had to gather in spirit rather than in spirit and in person as we gather here, right? And we sort of had to do it online with just sort of a few of us here at the church sort of running sort of casting it, you know, uh, live streaming it and everybody watching it. And that's wonderful and that's a blessing. I don't want to downplay that. It's a wonderful thing that we can do that in a time like this. 
But at the same time, it just isn't quite the same as gathering together in the same place, being together as the family of faith, and just pouring forth worship and praise. And I know for myself, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to see your faces and to gather and to worship. Even just from talking with a lot of people in the church over the last two months, there's been a sense of, especially the last few weeks of, man, I'm just sort of, I'm missing my brother's. Zoom fellowship, like that's great, but it, you know, I just want to be with them. I want to be my sisters in Christ, and I want to gather together on Sunday. And I'm sort of eager for that to happen. And I think having that taken away for a couple of months has made us really appreciate all the more so just what a blessing it is from the Lord to be able to gather with one another, but more significantly as God's people collectively to fellowship with him and worship him and praise him. And so I want to make sure and really call attention to this, and we're going to look at a number of scriptures here, to really recognize the blessing that this is, to recognize that to come here on Sundays in the Lord's house and just as God's people to be together and worship him, it's a blessing, it's a gift, it is a joy, and we ought to celebrate it as we're sort of being restored to this situation where now where we can gather together is sort of we're having that blessing restored to us to be able to gather together and worship, we should just be celebrating. We should be overjoyed, uh, just excited to be here together in the Lord's presence to worship him and to respond as well, recognizing that this blessing has been restored to us, to respond just with thanksgiving to God, just to say, Lord, thank you for this blessing. Thank you. We just want to praise you and give you thanks for your goodness and love and to restore to us this great gift of coming as your people collectively into your presence to worship you. A look at going to be focusing in particular on various psalms here that really highlight this, what we're talking about today, and, and gathering as, as God's people uh, to worship him just as a, a wonderful blessing that should be celebrated, that's a joy to us, and that we ought to respond with thanksgiving. And I want to first look at Psalm 100, so you guys can flip there in your Bibles. Psalm 100 here, we're going to read the whole Let me read it for us. I'll read through the whole thing uh, at first and then kind of go through it a little bit uh, afterward. And sort of pick it apart a bit. But so Psalm 100, a psalm for giving grateful praise. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And as we look at this psalm, I sort of want to explain it, kind of set the context, big picture. This is clearly a psalm that would have been used in sort of temple liturgy as a part of temple worship. Uh, Not that we can know with certainty the exact context, but sort of looking at the content of the psalm, you can sort of imagine this being used... Uh, at times, particularly people of Israel would have gathered at the temple, in particular for the, the pilgrimage festivals, so those three times a year when they were to go up, all of God's people were to go up to Jerusalem, to the temple, and to worship him, right? You could sort of imagine this being used at those times. doesn't mean it couldn't have been used at other times. And so you have all of God's people gathering there in Jerusalem, at the temple, and you can sort of imagine the Levitical choir or choirs uh, sort of outside of the temple. Maybe they're just outside of the gates as they're singing this as God's people are are headed up to Jerusalem and into the temple. Maybe they're even uh, a little further off, uh, a little further from the temple and leading a procession all the way sort of into Jerusalem and then ultimately into the, the temple their pilgrimage up into the temple, right, and sort of leading the procession there, sort of either of those contexts, right, whether they're just sort of staying outside as people come in or maybe leading a procession. But that's very likely the context in, this, in which this would have been used. And so you have God's people, right, this is the whole context, God's people coming together, right? It's not just sort of as individuals, right, in their homes, on their own private time, uh, sort of worshiping the Lord, but this is God's people at these sort of 
particularly significant times gathering together at the temple for worship. And the tone that runs throughout the whole thing is just this exuberant joy. They're just celebrating. They're just overjoyed, right? So to sort of setting the scene, again, imagine sort of the Levites here, the choir sort of leading this procession or outside of the gate singing this. And sort of all of Israel, as they're headed up to worship God in his house, in his temple, sort of joyfully joining in in the song, right? And, and here's what they're, they're singing. Shout for joy, to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates, right? This is speaking of the temple. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Through all generations, right? The, this, at the heart of this is a joy in the Lord, right? They're just rejoicing in their great and awesome God, but, but also what runs throughout is just a joy, right? You can sort of sense it. It's sort of palpable, just a joy and a gladness, just a delight in being able at this time to come to the temple, to come to God's house, right, as his people to gather together and worship him and praise him. They're just sort of jumping for joy, all excited, right, just sort of rejoicing in what is taking place, rejoicing in the Lord first and foremost, but also delighting in, in what is taking place, delighting in the privilege as God's people of gathering together to worship him. There's a joy that is found in that, a great delight and satisfaction that's found in that. And, and you see that running throughout this psalm, that right, not just are they rejoicing in the Lord, but they recognize what a privilege, what a blessing it is as God's people to gather collectively, right, to gather and as God's people just to worship and just to praise. And they're just excited to be able to do so. As they're headed to, to the temple, they're just rejoicing, they're excited. There's nothing they would rather do, right, than experience this blessing from the Lord and gather as his people just to pour forth worship and praise. And so they're joyfully celebrating this blessing, right? And that's what I want us to do as we're sort of now returning to gathering together as God's people in his house to, to praise him and worship him, just to, to joyfully celebrate that blessing and give him thanks for it. Now I want to turn to Psalm 42, and here we sort of see the flip side, right? So in Psalm 100, right, they're just, you have the people of God just, just jumping for joy, super excited that, you know, this is a time for God's people to gather together in his house to joy. They're delighted to be able to do so. They know what a blessing it is, right? And there's nowhere they'd rather be. Psalm 42, now, is sort of the opposite of here we have... Uh, what is clearly a Levitical choir leader, clearly someone who's high up in, in the Levites uh, in, in sort of singing, making music, temple worship, probably a leader of one of the choirs. He could have been one of the ones who think of Psalm 100 who would have been leading that procession, right? Uh, and, and so that's very possible. Uh, so this is a, a Levitical choir leader who is now in Babylonian exile. That, that's not the case here, but there's been probably some sort of raid attack from some surrounding nation, and he's sort of been caught up in it and taken away as a prisoner, taken into exile. And so here he is now, far away from the temple, right, mourning the fact he understands that he can still worship the Lord at a distance. It's not like he doesn't get that. He gets that he can pray to God and, and praise him and worship him. But there's a sense in which still it's like there's just such a joy of being able to gather with the rest of God's people in his house and just worship him. And he's just sort of lamenting missing that. Uh, very likely this was probably at the time of one of the pilgrimage festivals. And you sort of see that in the context of uh, the content of this psalm. And so it, it's probably that time of year when he's now sort of remembering in prior years what, what he would have been doing at this time. That he would have been leading the people of God up to the temple, right? Uh, as they're, they're processing, as they're headed to the temple to worship and praise God at one of these designated festivals and feasts. And he'd be sort of leading the way, you know, praising the Lord, worshiping the Lord uh, in song and, and sort of remembering that and he's sort of mourning the loss of that. So let me read it for us. It says, To the choir master, a mascal of the sons of Korah, as a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping 
festival, right? That's what he's talking about. His role there as leader of the Levitical choir, just joyfully leading the people of Israel up to the temple. And they're just singing songs of worship and praise and they're rejoicing. They're just so excited, rejoicing in the Lord and excited to be able to gather to worship him and praise him. And he's sort of remembering these times and now mourning that he can't be a part of this at this time because he's a prisoner in exile apart from the temple. So reading on verse 5, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember. And of Hermon from Mount Mazar, deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. And I would say he certainly did ultimately return. He was set free or or got free somehow. Otherwise, we likely wouldn't have this psalm. If he wrote this, and you can imagine he wrote it uh, in that time while he was in exile, and if we now have this as part of the Psalter, right, if it's part of Scripture there, uh, I think it's safe to assume that that ultimately he did make his way back to to God's people, to to Jerusalem, and, and undoubtedly took over the role that he once had there, leading the Levitical choir uh, and leading the people of God and worshiping the Lord. But, but at the time of his composing this, right, he, he's sort of mourning that, that loss of being able to be with his fellow people of God in God's house and just worshiping the Lord there and, and collectively, not just individually, but collectively as God's people just to lift their voices high in praise of God. And there's just this mourning of that. And I think that that speaks to sort of, I know how I felt a bit over the last two months. And again, how I know a a number of us felt just from from speaking to other people as well. Again, not to say that that online services can't be a blessing, and they are, and I'm grateful for that technology and to be able to do that uh, in times like this pandemic. But at the same time, it's sort of like, it, it doesn't quite feel like the same thing. It's not quite the same as God's people really being together uh, in, in the Lord's house just to worship and praise him for all of us collectively to join in worship of our great and awesome God. And there's just such a great joy that's experienced in doing that and coming before God as his people and worshiping him. It, it's satisfying and nourishing to the soul. It's just a great delight. And, and I think we sort of recognize that as a blessing. And, and so over the last two months, I think a lot of us have sort of, maybe not to the extent here of the psalmist, uh, you know, who authored Psalm 42, but, but on some level like that, sort of a mourning of, of you know, I, I'm missing being with my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm missing being at church with them on Sundays and together just worshiping God and opening up his word. I'm missing all of that. And again, now thinking, well, now that's been restored to us, what ought to be our response? Again, like Psalm 100, just to be rejoicing, just to be jumping for joy. We're back again. We're back in the Lord's house as his people together, worshiping, praising him. And we ought to just be celebrating that, rejoicing in that great blessing from the Lord and giving him thanks for it. And I want to look at another Psalm, Psalm 136, and a wonderful, well-known Psalm, and, and certainly all about giving thanks. And we're going to talk about how and this is where I'm going to go with this, is that our response is now we've sort of been restored to being able to gather in worship as God's people. Our response should be just to thank him for this blessing, to thank him for his goodness and love shown toward us in this way, and ultimately in every way that he has shown his love and goodness to us. So let me read Psalm 136 for us now. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. 
To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, his love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel, his love endures forever. He remembered us in our low estate, his love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. He gives food to every creature, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, his love endures forever. And sort of to sum up this psalm, to put it in a nutshell... This is what it's all about, right? You have here uh, God's people, Israel here, really recounting God's goodness and love that he has shown. That he has shown to creation, all of creation, right? He has created everything and it's good and it's wonderful and it's a blessing to us and to every part of creation. And, And not only that, but he continues to sustain the created order as it says, right? He gives food, this is verse 25, he gives food to every creature, right? Just recounting here God's goodness and his love shown toward man and indeed toward all of creation, looking really through history, starting with with creation itself and seeing God's goodness and love in action there, right, and and affirming that. But also even in in Israel's history, particularly looking back at sort of the whole Exodus account, all of that, uh, ultimately towards sort of right as they approach the promised land or are about to enter into it and conquer it, God's continued goodness and his enduring love shown to the people of Israel time after time, how he delivered them out of bondage in Egypt. He led them through the wilderness. Uh, He defeated mighty kings who stood in their way. He delivered them, and ultimately he did lead them into the promised land and defeated the peoples who were in the promised land, right? And, And you could even go on and on if you wanted through Israel's history as you just continue to see time after time God acting in goodness and love toward his people. And this is the people of Israel just saying, we want to take time and affirm this. Look at the history of of our people, even just look through all of history, all the way back to creation, and affirm God's goodness and love that he has shown toward us in an enduring way. And then to respond just with thanksgiving, right? It's a psalm of thanksgiving to recognize God's goodness and love that endures forever. And just to respond by saying, we got to thank God. We got to praise him. It's the only right and appropriate response, just to give him thanks and praise him for his goodness and his love, and that's what the psalm's all about. And I really want us to have the same response as we sort of think of whether specifically, again, thinking of this particular blessing that we're experiencing now where we're able to come back together as God's people and collectively just join together in praise and worship of the Lord and what a blessing and what a gift that is, what a joy to us and satisfying to our souls. And we ought to acknowledge that as a great gift and blessing and celebrate it, but then also give him thanks for it. But I even want to take it a little further and say not just specifically to our situation of now we're back worshiping together right here, worshiping together as God's people and praising him and what a blessing that is and let's give him thanks for that. But let's even be a little more general than that and say let's look at what happens here in Psalm 136. It's not just focusing on one thing or just the present, but it's it's sort of taking a look at history, taking a look through time. And I want us to do that as well, to sort of take a look at our own lives right? You can even back up before our own lives as the Israelites do here with Psalm 136 and just look at through all of history going back to creation and just seeing God act in goodness and love toward his people, toward indeed all of creation as we see here in Psalm 136. But in particular, certainly to to take the time to look at our own lives, to sort of take stock and look through the years, whether sort of recent years or months or weeks, but even to look back over you know, years from long ago and and just to take stock and recognize all of the ways in which God has really acted in wondrous goodness and love to us and has just blessed us in in wondrous great ways, but also in little ways that all too often we sort of take for granted, we maybe don't make much note of, and yet they're wonderful blessings from the Lord and to respond as, as they did here in Psalm 136, just to give thanks, 
just to praise the Lord, give him thanks for every blessing that he has shown us, all the ways he has shown his goodness and love to us, just to celebrate those blessings joyfully and pour forth thanksgiving. And I want to look at one more verse, because I think it's, it's very relevant for sort of our time right here, right now. And it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, really the first half of verse 18. And it says this, Paul writing, he says, Give thanks in all circumstances. Because we can be talking here and thinking, oh, you know, we're talking all about, you know, blessing from the Lord, how he's shown his love and goodness, and and our response should be certainly to celebrate those blessings, but to respond with thanksgiving as well. And it's it's sort of, we might be thinking, some of us, hey, I'm going through a tough time. You know, maybe this has been a a real struggle, uh, particularly in the midst of the pandemic, maybe just a lot of fear going around or feeling isolated and depressed and, and sort of, Uh, separated from friends and family, and maybe that's taken its toll. A lot of people are out of work, out of jobs, and there's financial pressures and and stress there. Maybe you're thinking, it just doesn't feel like a time for giving thanks. Nothing seems to be going right. Everything seems to be going wrong, and it just feels like I'm not in the mood for giving thanks. Well, Well, Paul says that's not the way it works. He says we need to give thanks in all circumstances. And the reality is, even in the worst circumstances, we have so many blessings from the Lord that we ought to be giving him thanks for. Even in our darkest hour, right, we still have the Lord. We have been reconciled to him. We have life in him, everlasting life in him. We have so many blessings from the Lord that that there's no reason not to be giving him thanks, even in tough times. And so I think of times like like this where maybe it, it does feel like for some of us a time in which it's, it's difficult to give thanks. It's just we're more down. We don't sort of see all of the blessings because all too often when things get tough, we see the few things that aren't going our way rather than recognizing the great abundance of things that are going our way, all the wonderful things that we sort of overlook that are blessings from the Lord. And so even in the toughest times, we should be thanking the Lord for every good thing, for himself, for the gift of salvation and life that we have in him and every other blessing that we still have in him we ought to be giving him thanks whatever the circumstances are it's as i sort of think of well okay so what's our application i mean it sort of seems simple in a sense but what's our application sort of specific uh, challenge from here well in a specific sense i want to say looking at our situation and now we're sort of restored to being able to gather as god's people in, in the church here and worship him together collectively And just, first of all, specifically, recognize the blessing that that is. Don't take it for granted. Recognize it as a gift from God and just joyfully celebrate it. Just be excited that you're here right now, that we're worshiping the Lord and we're doing it together and celebrate that and give him thanks. But again, I want to back up a little bit and be a little more general and say, right, we ought to be taking note of all of God's blessings in our life. We ought to be taking note of every way in which he has shown us his goodness and love, as we see in Psalm 136, just sort of taking stock and seeing God's goodness and love in action uh, throughout history. We ought to be doing that, looking at our lives and seeing and taking stock of every blessing from the Lord, every bit of goodness and love that he has shown to us, and just celebrating that, joyfully celebrating that, and giving him thanks. And, and, and you know, as I was thinking about this sermon and, and sort of application Uh, part of what I wanted to do is we're sort of focusing on being back together as God's people, sort of the community of faith and being back together. I really wanted to sort of emphasize that as we're thinking of, well, if we have an application of sort of recognizing God's blessings and and, and certainly celebrating them and and giving thanks, I felt like it, it almost wouldn't seem right if we didn't take time to do it right here, right now. Um, We're focusing again on being together as God's people, so let's do that. Let's give him thanks, and let's do it as his people here gathered together and just acknowledge God's blessings and then celebrate them and give him thanks. And so I'm going to start for us, but I would like to open up the mic. I know it's not like there are a ton of us here, but if anyone would would like to, we can maybe have time for a couple people just to come up and share uh, how God has blessed them in, in some way, how God has shown you goodness and love. Maybe it's recently, over the past couple months in this pandemic. Maybe it's a couple years ago. Maybe it's 10 years ago or more, but some way in which God has just shown you love and goodness and blessing and, and that you just want to call attention to that, affirm it, uh, celebrate it, and then for us as God's people, just to give him thanks for it. And so I'm going to kick us off. And, and I think it's sort of easy to focus on the big thing. So I'm actually not going to do that. Uh, it would be easy to say, well, what are some things for myself that I'd 
want to sort of take stock of and say, well, what are, how has God shown me love and, and his goodness and blessing in my life? And certainly I'd think of, well, of course, he, he's rescued me. He saved me. He sent his son to die on a cross for me so that through faith in him, I might be forgiven and, and reconciled to God, have fellowship with him, have everlasting life. Uh, and, and, you know, that, that's first and foremost what I ought to be mentioning, of course, and, and celebrating that, that blessing from the Lord and, and giving him thanks for it. But I think probably for most of us, we understand that, and we probably give thanks to the Lord for that, and we certainly ought to, and be giving him thanks for that time after time, or maybe some of the other big things in life, you know, the, the blessing of a spouse, or, or other family, or, or, or a job, sort of more of the obvious big things that I think we're more apt to, to thank God for, and so I want to not to, to neglect those, those are huge and major, and we ought to be giving God thanks for those things. But I sort of want to focus for myself a little bit on some of the little things that I think we often sort of overlook. They sort of go unnoticed. Uh, they're blessings from the Lord, and yet we, we just fail to take note and give him thanks for, for, for those things. And in particular, I want to focus on things that are sort of recent in the midst of, of this pandemic, just to highlight that even in the midst of times that seem like they're tough, they don't feel like times of blessing, yet even in the midst of those times, God does bless and, and and so I'm going to share even just some little things. They might seem minor, yet they're, they're still wonderful blessings from the Lord that we ought to be taking note of and giving him thanks for. And so I want to mention that I forget the exact timing of this. It was probably a few weeks ago. You know, it's sort of spring. We're getting into nice weather. And, you know, the kids are starting to get a little bit bigger. And we've had this little kind of dinky swing set that's sort of for, like, if you're one-year-old, maybe through to, like, four or five but by the time you get to like five, six, or James seven, it just it doesn't work anymore. The kids love being on the swing set. They could play there like all day long, but it just doesn't even work. James sort of gets going on it, and the thing it's it's sort of screwed into the ground, but it starts rocking a bit. It's just it doesn't work. And so we're thinking, well, really, we could use a, like a, a nice big swing set. The kids would love that, but you know they're not they're not cheap. They're kind of expensive. I think we had even at some point looked at some prices. I forget, but you know maybe what we were looking for is you know. 1300 bucks, 1500 bucks, something like that. And so, it was, well, you know, money's tight. Do we have the money to spend on that? Can they just sort of make do with what they have? And, and I think it was literally that same day, that evening. It may have been the next day. My memory sort of fails me. But I actually think it was the same day. Liz and I were sort of talking about this. It had been a nice day. Uh, the kids were using the old swing set and sort of, you know, we were thinking, we really need a new one. What are we going to do? And Liz just happens to be on her phone and, like, checks her Facebook account. And a neighbor who lives across the street and maybe, like, you know, five, four houses down the road uh, had posted on Facebook, hey, we have a swing set. Uh, the kids have really grown out of it. And, and it's a nice one. It's in good condition. They don't use it. You know, if someone wants it just for 100 bucks, you can come and, and pick it up. As long as you can haul it away yourself, then, then you know, we just want someone to get some use out of it. So Liz quickly messaged the person, you know, oh yeah, we, we love it, you know, that would be great, that'd be such a blessing. Um, and we know the person, you know, they're at the bus stop too in the morning and whatnot, their kids are a little bit older, but, um, and she said, oh yeah, you know, we'll save it for you, that's great. The next day, it was actually Sunday, that was the next day, so I came in, preached, you know, it was, this was in the pandemic, it was just sort of a small group of us doing the online service. Um, and then afterwards, we headed over and picked it up. You know, we went just a few houses down. Uh, we tried to pay. She wouldn't even take the $100. She was like, I'm just glad that you guys are going to get some good use out of it. And because we were even so close, it wasn't like we had to take this thing apart into like every little itty bitty piece and then have to reassemble it. I think it was like in three big pieces and we just hauled, walked it over, hauled it over and reassembled it. And I mean, the kids have been playing on it seemingly nonstop ever since. I mean, literally, Rachel pretty much is, like, driving us nuts with nonstop requests. Can you push me? Can you push me? Can you push me? She would, for, for six hours a day, sit on that swing and just be pushed all day long. That's how much she loves it. Um, and we've just been blessed by, you know, the boys. Rachel, they just love playing on it, going down the slide, being on the swings, um, just having a blast with it. And I think of that, you know, it's not the biggest thing. It's, it's not like the world's biggest blessing. But even in the midst of a time where, you know, uh, things aren't going great for everybody, God just still gives us these, these little blessings. Uh, and we have to take time to, to really take note of them, not just overlook it and say, oh, yep, wonderful, great. Uh, and we just sort of move on. But to realize, no, th this is God at work and this is a blessing from him. And I ought to just be celebrating this, this blessing and the goodness of God in this and just giving him thanks and praise for it. And again, I could go on. I'll, I'll give another quick example, but related to the church. 
Um, you know, in the midst of this has been all the government spending stimulus stuff and whatnot. And I'm not sort of either advocating for it or against it. I'm not commenting on that whether, you know, we have enough debt. Should we be racking up more debt or not? But if the government's going to do it, what a blessing that the church for the small business part of it, the money that was to go to small businesses, and that includes churches as well, that New Hope Chapel was able to get money from the government. Now, technically, it's a loan of about 20 but, but for the money that is spent for payroll, so for my salary, for, for Cheryl's pay as the administrative assistant, and there are a few other things, I think some utilities and other things, whatever gets spent on those things over maybe it's like the first eight weeks or something is, is forgiven, right? They forgive that part of the loan and you don't have to pay it back. And the reality is probably most of it, if not even all of the loan, the whole 21000 but certainly at least close to it, will all be forgiven and that'll be effectively just money given to us. And I think of how time and again, you know, we sort of come to the end of the year and money's tight, you know, we're, but we're going to make it work and people step up to the plate. And just what a blessing to, to be able to have an extra 21 or nearly 21,000, even if not all of it is forgiven dollars, to have that extra money in our pockets. And, and again, I'm not saying should the government have done that or not, but if it's happening, what a blessing from the Lord that we were able uh, to, to, to receive those funds and, and to be able to use them now in service to the Lord and his kingdom. And again, in the midst of a time that's, that everything seems like it's just going wonderful, and yet still, time and again, God just shows his goodness and his love, and he blesses. And we ought to take time just to say, man, what a blessing. Thank you, Lord. And just to celebrate it, give him thanks. And so I just, thinking of those two, I could list a whole host of other things, ways in which God has shown goodness and love to me, to the church, uh, and blessed and just give him thanks. But those are just a couple that I want to share. And again, uh, even little things that I think we all too often overlook. But now I do want to open up the mic. I've sort of talked long enough. And if there's anyone here who just wants to, to come up and, and share some way in which God has just blessed and shown his love and goodness to you, again, maybe recently, maybe 10 years ago. And if you just want to share that, and then we can just celebrate that and, and give the Lord thanks for it. Yeah, Steve, you talked about how uh, um, we are a community. God, God called us to be a community, and we want to celebrate together. It's been tough in, the, uh, in, this, um, in this time not being able to do that. Sheila had a milestone uh, birthday, and for, for many or all of us, you know, think about our, our mothers, celebrate our mothers if they're still with us. We weren't able to do that much, but just you know, still uh, you know, want to, um, almost like blowing a trumpet in the wilderness, so there's no one to really hear it, but still... You know, we still want to celebrate and, and rejoice with, uh, with these uh, uh, significant events. And so thinking of, of Sheila and her, her milestone birthday and, and just her being a mom to my kids. And, you know, these are our causes for, for me to give, uh, to give joy and, and, and be joyful and, and give thanks. So uh, I, I think I've joined with, with many or all of us in, in just wanting to express that, that joy for these things that we've wanted to celebrate together as a community and haven't been able to, but we, we still celebrate. Hey church, um, just wanted to share um, some good news with you guys. Um, so in the midst of the pandemic, we were able to uh, get a small condo in Grafton. Um, so uh, we weren't expecting it. It was, um, it was an interesting series of events, but uh, finally we were able to move into the condo and um, just celebrating God for his blessing and for his, pro for his provision. So yeah, just... Um, just sharing with you guys this celebration and rejoicing with them. Thank you. Anyone else? We have time for another, someone else wants to share. Thank you guys for, for sharing, and I'm sure there are plenty of other... God has just poured out upon us time and again, day after day. And uh, let's just take some time now to come before the Lord in prayer and really celebrate these things, the things that we've just mentioned, but, but all of the other blessings too that haven't been mentioned and just celebrate and give him thanks. So pray with me.
Lord God, you are good and your love endures forever. And may we never forget that. May we never take it for granted. You show your goodness and love to us day after day after day. You bless us day after day after day with the great things of your son on a cross making atonement for us, having life everlasting in him that we so thoroughly don't deserve. And what a gift to have that salvation and, and to be reconciled to you and have fellowship with you. What, what a gift, Lord, from the great things like that just to little itty-bitty things like a swing set that may not seem like much in the grand scheme of things, and yet you just delight in blessing even in the small ways. We thank you for, uh, for Sheila and the milestone birthday, Lord, and uh, none of us should take any day for granted. Every day of life is a gift from you, and in Sheila's case, certainly, it's all the more palpable just to know the, the cancer that she had and all the statistics, and yet you have just so wondrously blessed, and we are so grateful to have her here in our midst and, and for her to be a part of our church family, and every day is a gift, and we thank you for that milestone birthday, and we pray for just so many more, Lord, and for uh, Richard and, and Sharon and just the, the blessing that you've poured out upon them. Again, even in the midst of a, a pandemic, a time that doesn't seem like a time of blessing, yet your blessing, Lord, providing a home that they were able to purchase a, a condo in Grafton. And again, what a gift, what a blessing, a place that, that can be their own and where they can raise a family. And um, we just thank you for, for your goodness and those things and, and every little thing, Lord, all the blessings that we haven't even mentioned and voiced but, but are on our hearts we just want to celebrate them and acknowledge them, affirm them, and just thank you, Lord. You are good. Your love endures forever, and we thank you and praise you for it. In Christ's name, amen. Was service this morning? For I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. For I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night as you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am For I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we Say a word, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways To us Oh, you're perfect, you're perfect You're perfect in all of your ways 
You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. Love so my Bible. Love so undeniable, I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into love. Love, love, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Just before we close with the benediction, I just want to mention that we will not have the usual fellowship hour down below in the fellowship hall, but we will still have the virtual Zoom fellowship for all those who are interested, so you can head there after the service and and be together in spirit in that way. So now let's close with the benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, both now and forevermore. Amen.